We're using these floor in a kitchen. It's quite normal that you're going to spill things on it, but don't panic. It's actually very easy to clean, very straightforward to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe up the loose liquid, first of all, with an absorbent cloth. Then I'm going to spot clean it. And then afterwards, we're going to clean the entire floor. Okay, so we've wiped up the wet liquid. The second stage is to just use a matte damp cloth. And what we're going to do is just wipe the surface with it. And then the final phase, once we've given it a wipe, is that we'll use the same matte damp cloth with a little bit of uh, a cleaning product. I'm going to give it a couple of sprays and leave that on the surface for a minute or two to do the work for us. So we'll just lift this and put that over in the corner. We're going to clean the floor now. First of all, we're going to dry dust it. And for that, with this product, we use a green microfiber mop. Assemble the mop, very straightforward. Handle clicks into the mop head. The beauty of these is being flat, they don't smear dirt onto the skirting boards and they're very good at picking up the dirt rather than moving it around. Now we're going to mop the floor. So first of all, hot water. So we've got hot water into which we're going to add our cleaning product. There are many available, mild alkaline low foaming cleaners. Dilute it according to the instructions. We're going to use a couple of microfiber mops, roll them up and we're going to place them into the water. So we take one of the wet pads put it on the floor, and then from there, we're gonna start the mopping process. Be generous with the water, but be careful when you're approaching furniture and cupboards. We're gonna leave the product on the floor so that it can actually do the work for us. Now it's important to remove the cleaning product and the water from the floor. And to do that, we're going to use another clean microfiber mop that has just been wet with hot or warm water, and that's going to be wiped across the surface to remove the product from the floor. It's important that the underfloor heating is off when we do this process, otherwise the floor dries too quickly. And you can also give a little spray if you find an area that's a little bit dirtier. I'm just gonna rinse the floor. I'm gonna try and catch it before it starts to dry. If it dries too soon, you might get smears. You may wanna do this process once or twice, depending on how much product you have on the floor. So one of the reasons why we suggest to do this in clean shoes or no shoes is to avoid footprints being left in the wet floor. They're very easy to get rid of if you mop them up quickly. So sometimes you may have, after you've cleaned the floor, uh, little streaks that are still visible. That normally indicates that the floor isn't actually clean yet. So what that tells us is that we need to do another quick clean of the floor before it's fully clean. So what we've now done is we've opened the windows at both ends of the room to allow a little natural draft through to assist in drying the floor a little faster. This means that we can get back on it in probably 10 or 15 minutes rather than maybe 20 to 30 minutes if you don't open the windows.